All right, well, I was on Facebook earlier this week, and one of my friends had been out taking pictures of the supermoon, but he found himself a little bit flummoxed. Reason being that he couldn't get the what was on the ground and what was in the sky to be prop, you know, developed properly, uh, illuminated properly in the final image. So he could either get the details of the ground and then the moon would be, moon would be washed out, or he could get the details of the moon and the ground would basically be dark and black. And he was going, well, why can't I do this? So I explained to him the nature of photo stacking and his brain melted. So I decided that I would give him uh, a little bit of a video just to show him the idea of what's going on here. Uh, to better e explain it to him, I should probably be doing this at night, but I'm doing it during the day. You can see here in the Lightroom, I have three exposures of the same scene, um, and they're you know they're different exposures. So we go here. So this is taken 1 60th of a second with f6.3. This is f5.6, 125. This is f4.5 at 180. So slower shutter speed, faster shutter speed. You can see here, the highlights are all washed out. Here, there's a little bit more balance, but the skies, not a lot of detail up there. The You can see the clouds are just kind of barely being seen. And here you have, the clouds are basically being showing up. I would actually rather have a, a darker, underexposed picture here for this, but you know, I got what I got. Um, but the tree is all dark. You can't make any of the details in the leaves. So what I'm going to do is going to put these together. I'm going to create what's called a high dynamic range. Typically, I like to do this with four or five exposures or even six. We'll just do this with three and we'll see how it turns out. So in order to make this a high dynamic range image, I'm going to go to the photo menu in Lightroom. There are plenty of apps that do this. I just use Lightroom because that's what I use to manage my photos. I'm going to go to photo merge and I'm going to select HDR, high dynamic range. This will create a preview. Now, while it does that, I'm going to show you th two things. First is it has auto align. So if there are subtle differences, if there's vibration on the camera, or if I was doing this by hand, it's going to try to align the elements together. Um, I always suggest doing HDR images with a tripod. Uh, it's going to auto tone it. So it's actually going to put it together in a way that actually would look most pleasant at the end, according to Lightroom standards. And the deghost amount is basically to deal with any kind of movement that happen inside the the photo in between the different frames. So here's the, the final result. This is the preview of the HDR. You can see the sky is generally uh, got some detail. The clouds are over here. It's still a little bit washed out. The sun was just over here, so I was really kind of pushing it here. The tree is almost backlit at this point. Um, but you can see the leaves. There's a, a lot of detail in them, which you would not have in any single image that we had uh, of the three that I took. I'm going to hit Merge. And this is going to take a little while to put all these things together. This is the second time I've done this. The first time I did the recording, I forgot to record my screen. So I had a lot of audio and no picture. It was a lot of fun. I feel like a baseball announcer. I'm doing things in between pitches. If I was doing baseball right now, I'd be talking about somebody's favorite pizza. There we go. Okay, so now I have four images instead of three, and this fourth image, it's still processing just a little bit there. This is the HDR image. You can see it's a DNG. The file size of this is going to be huge because it's the combination of these three um, raw files. Uh, and we'll bring this up here. You can see it's been auto-toned. So if I go to the develop module, you can see. Let's go up here. There we go. So the white balance is just a shot. I'm not going to mess with that too much. I probably could, but I won't. Um, the exposure has been brought down a little bit just to give some more detail if the highlights get washed out. Highlights brought all the way down because the sky is a mess. Shadows brought all the way up because these were, were a mess. And the whites and blacks are automatically adjusted. I sometimes will mess with this. Um, I tried this in my last one and actually did a pretty good job auto-toning. But that sky is still a little bit washed out, so we're going to play a little bit. I'm going to do the tone curve. I'm going to bring the highlights down just a tad and bring the shadows up just a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to mess with the color balance a little bit. So I'm going to change the luminance of this just a little bit. Uh, one of the things you should notice is that when you're changing color, the luminance and color balance, a lot of times what's going to end up is you're going to get this outline around uh, the different elements in the, the picture. Kind of a cool effect, but not what I'm going for here. I actually want to look want it to look more natural. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. 
And then I'm going to increase the saturation, get some of the blue sky back. It looks a little bit like a bluer sky. And actually, I think I brought the luminous down a little bit too much. You can see that outline. I'm trying to get rid of that outline as much as I can. But I still want that blue to look good. Let's see if I can mess with the hue. And then we can change the... So I can make it purple. I can make it green. We're just going to keep it where it is. And I'll increase the saturation just a little bit more. Come saturation. There we go. It's still a little bit of an outline there, but not bad for just three exposures. So my clouds are in definition. I can see my tree. Um, there's a little bit of a wash out there. Still not entirely happy with that. I'm trying to get rid of that as much as I can. There we go. Not too bad. So for a quick and dirty picture. Uh, but now I have the sky and the beautiful orange leaves that are still on my tree that I'm going to have to rake next week. Um, and it looks pretty good. Not bad for a first, first try on this or second try on this, really. But you get the idea. Stacking takes multiple exposures, puts them together, and it allows you to do much more than you could with any single exposure.